so you're always trying to sculpt clothing for your character, but it always end up like this? Stop it. Because I may have a workaround for that. These tools are here to make our lives a bit easier. They basically do cloud simulation for us, but it's way more manageable than something you find on the particle system, since you have more control over it. So today, I'm going to show you how I made this shirt and jacket from scratch using these tools. But before we start, make sure to check out my Gumroad and Patreon page. There you can download all the 3D files and real-time process videos of making the characters from the channel. Link is in the description. Let's do it. Bring your model. It's important to have a character to start with, so your jacket comes out on the right proportions. If you don't have one, just download the free base model. It doesn't matter. First drag out a new window from the side and click on this icon and switch to UV editor. Go to Pinterest or Google and find some jacket references. Click on image and open up the reference image you found. This way you always have it on the left side. But if you're feeling fancy, you can use other reference apps. Those give you a lot more options. First, we're gonna make the top behind the jacket. I always use the topology method in making clothing. To do that, in the front view, add a plane, rotate it, and in the edit mode, scale it down. Move it to the right a bit, enable snapping tool, and make sure it's on face. In the modifier properties, add a mirror modifier so it fills out the opposite side. In the mesh overlay settings, on the top, enable the topology so you can see the polygons better. Now pick up poly build tool and move the mouse to the outside of the face until the outer line turns blue, then drag out a face. Keep doing that while looking at the image for reference. Just go around the model and fill in one side of the body. We don't want to go over the side because mirror modifier already took care of that, but we can see it right now because we are in the edit mode. I just realized that the topology color thing doesn't work correctly. That's because the normals are backwards. If you turn on face orientation, you can see it's red. That means we gotta flip it. We can do that by pressing Alt N and flip. Now the topology color should work correctly. When it comes to the middle, enable clipping in the mirror modifier so the edges stick to the middle. After we're done with the base, let's add a subdivision modifier. We can also apply the mirror modifier by moving the mouse on the modifier and pressing Ctrl A. That way both sides join together. Now in the sculpt mode, pick up grab brush and drag the cloth outside of the body. To add some thickness to the cloth, we can add a solidify modifier and increase the thickness. After we're done with the top, we can use another plane to start the base of the jacket. This time we are going up. You can disable snapping tool for this one if you want. Then going around the color, and since we already have a mirror modifier here as well, we don't need to do the other side. Filling up the torso, then after that, we can move on to the sleeves. For situations like these, we can select the outer edges and press E to extrude. Go straight down to the rest, then we can add additional edge loops by pressing Ctrl R and rolling up the mouse. That way it keeps adding edge loops. Before moving forward, make sure you adjust the height of the sleeves correctly. For example, if it's gonna be a folded sleeves like mine, you gotta make the sleeves longer so it gets folded when we push it up. But if you don't want it folded this much, you can make it shorter. Now we are gonna enter the cloth seam stage. If you wanna know more about these tools, I fully covered it in the video right here. Make sure to check it out first. Before going to sculpt mode, really important to apply the mirror modifier. Enable X mirror as well. I forgot to do it and that mistake ended up adding another stage to my workflow. So don't be a brain dead like me. After that, go to sculpt mode so we can begin. To fold the sleeves, we need to first determine the areas of the effect. In order to do that, we can use face set tool and just color the sleeves. You can hold Ctrl while painting to continue coloring with the same color. After that, pick up the pose tool. Press N to bring up the right menu. In the tool section, change the deformation to cloth simulation. Change the next one to squash and stretch. And face sets as the rotation, so it folds and stretches based on the face sets. Add multi-res modifier from here or press Ctrl 1. 
First change the multi res number to something in between. Not low poly and not high poly, something in the middle. Otherwise, it's gonna have a really low number of folds, or too much folds, and it's not going to look good. After that, carefully pull up the sleeves. You have to do it several times to get it right. I guarantee you it's not going to look right on the first try. This much fold is good, but it obviously depends on the cloth and reference. Subdivide one more time to smooth out these folds. I think this looks decent. You see, it has some parts that overlaps with the skin. We can simply pick up grab tool and grab that part of the cloth and drag it out. In this case, bottom of the sleeves are not loose, so we can just go back to the face set tool, color the bottom of the sleeves, pick up the pose tool and start dragging it to the bottom to make it straight. To push it in a bit, we can do a fun trick. Pick up the grab brush, enable auto masking by face sets on the right menu. Now we can easily push it inside without the other parts getting affected. We can also limit the areas of cloud simulation by going to edit mode, select the sleeves for example, which we already took care of, and press edge to hide. You can remove the face set colors by going to face sets on the top bar and click on face set by visible. In my case, I got a flat part in the bottom of the jacket. We're gonna do the same thing as we did with the sleeves. Just paint the bottom with the face sets all around the jacket. And while the auto masking by face sets is enabled, drag the white parts down to create some folds. You can see the green part stayed the same, and that is exactly what we want. We can use the same brush to create different shapes on the clothing. Since I'm not trying to copy the exact shape of the jacket in the reference, I color these parts of the jacket, then using pose tool, I drag it out a bit, or color the parts on the shoulder and drag it to the right side, so we create an edge right around here. I also separated the color and drag it down using pose tool. Notice we don't have any thickness on the clothing, it's not really realistic this way. One way to fix it is to use this amazing tool called Boundary. Once you picked it up, we can change a few things on the tool menu on the right. First go down to the fall off and switch it to smooth or smoother to have a more round bend. Make the brush much smaller and while the multi res is on the highest number possible, bend the edges of the cloth to the inside. Let's do it for all the exposed edges like the bottom of the jacket and edges of the sleeves. Yes, we could have added solidify, but this way we avoided adding more topology, so it's lighter and easier to handle. We can now pick up grab tool, go around the object and fix the parts that are a bit rough. The base of our jacket is ready, and I think it looks decent enough. So far we have done it without having to sculpt anything, but from here on out, to add more details to the jacket, we need to sculpt just a little. To start, we can sculpt the stitches part using crease brush. Press shift C to choose crease brush. On the stroke menu on the top, enable stabilize stroke and increase the values if you want. Then start making a line where the stitches are located. This makes the job much easier since it removes any potential shaking and make it easier to control. So let's do the same thing for the shoulders and another line to separate the collar from the torso. We're still missing the zipper. To make it, it's super easy. We can just make it plain, add a few loop cuts by pressing Ctrl R and try to shape it as close as possible to the reference. Add a solidify modifier to make it thicker, then a subdivision modifier to make it smooth. After that, add an array modifier. Change the X factor to 0 and Y to a bit more than 1, so it places the next one on the top of the first one. Then increase the count so it continues going up. Shift A and add a curve. Select the zipper, then the curve. Ctrl P and parent it by clicking on the object. Select the zipper again and in the modifier properties add a curve modifier. Click on this eyedropper and select the curve. Change it to Z to line it up with the curve. But if it didn't work, try the others until it works. Now place both of them somewhere close to the jacket. Select the curve and press tab to go to edit mode. Then shape the curve from the side so it fits with the jacket. If it ran out of the zipper, you can just increase the count. Then place it on the other side as well. The zipper also needs a holder, so using the same simple methods, create the holder according to the reference. There's really not much into it. After that, place it hanging on the bottom of the zipper. We can add more stitches using the same old crease brush. We already have our base ready, so everything after this point is me improvising a new design for the jacket. Also one in the back and connected to the other side. And another stitch line that goes from the shoulder to the bottom of the sleeves. To make the jacket look cooler, let's add some tilted lines with this much space between them. By rotating the camera, I add another set of lines, tilted the other way this time. And for the shoulder, I make a shape like this. 
A fun trick I like to do to make the creases a bit more pronounced is to when we added the crease, increase the size of the brush by a small number, then hold control and brush over the crease parts again. And as you can see, we have a sharper crease like this, which I really like. Sculpt some shapes for the pocket. Now to finish things off, let's pick up the draw brush. And while the strength is not that high, slowly add some folds close to the creases where leather is a stretch or clumped up in one place. Maybe some folds on the side. And some small ones around here. Let me say once more. These folds and how they look totally depends on the type of cloth you have. For example, fabric doesn't fold as the same as leather, so always keep that in mind. Also we got some folds in the back as well. This spot was kinda empty, so I went ahead and add another pocket here as well. Now that we have all the pockets, we can also add some folds around the pockets to create that stretch leather look. But be sure to not overdo it, or add too much. I add same type of lines for the bottom of the jacket as well, cause this part is made out of fabric. Okay, this is our final model. In the last video, I promised you guys that I'm gonna texture this jacket fully in Blender. So make sure you subscribe for the texturing video that's coming out real soon. Hope you found the video helpful and make sure you visit my Gumroad and Patreon page to download all the 3D files and real-time process videos. See you on the next one. Peace.